Okay, so today we are reviewing this book, The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This is an LGBTIQ plus contemporary with a bit of romance as well. All those good things. Normally I do spoiler and spoiler free reviews. Today I am going to do a spoiler free only review because I just feel like this book needs to be read by everyone, and so I don't want to put my spoilery thoughts in here. I want to tell you what I think in a spoiler-free way, and then if this is the type of book that you want to pick up, you pick it up, and then you tell me what you think, okay? So, spoiler-free review only, where I'm going to give you three pros and three cons, as well as a bit of a premise of this book. So, here we go. First of all, let's talk a little bit about the premise. This book follows Cal and... Leon. I'm going to start off by talking a bit about Cal. So, Cal is born into a three-person household. We have Cal, his mum, and his dad. Cal's dad is also, incidentally, named Cal. So, for the remainder of this premise, to differentiate between them, I'm going to call the son, Cal Jr., and the dad, Cal Sr. When this book opens up, we come to learn that Cal Jr. is an aspiring journalist. He does anything and everything that he can to try and become a journalist, despite the fact that he is a teenager. He has a platform on some sort of social media, and he does a lot of live streaming about hard-hitting news, and he's become very popular and very well-known to the point that a company known as BuzzFeed even want to take him on as an apprentice, which he is very excited about. He feels like this is going to be his first foot in the door. However, one day, Cal Jr.'s father, Cal Sr., receives a call that announces that he is going to take on an apprenticeship in Texas at a training centre for NASA, and if he does well with his apprenticeship, he could potentially get on their ship and board the ship for NASA. The family is uprooted from the lives that they were living, which leaves Cal Jr. with a ton of resentment because of this missed opportunity with BuzzFeed. He also, at the same time, has a best friend who lives in the same apartment complex as him, who's going through some issues with her family. She's having a very tough time with her family, so he also feels bad about leaving her behind. Another interesting aspect to this apprenticeship that Cal Sr. is going to be a part of is that there is also a bunch of media there. The reason for this is because they have a reality show that they are filming around the apprenticeship known as Shooting Stars, and... This kind of complicates things because any time that Cal or his dad or his mum leaves their house that they're staying in while they're doing the apprenticeship, they can be filmed for any sort of reason. It's just part of the apprenticeship. While at the apprenticeship place, Cal meets a boy and his sister. The boy's name is Leon. And it turns out that the sister is a massive fan of Cal Jr.'s work. She's watched a lot of his videos, and she absolutely loves him. Leon ends up confessing that he has... he doesn't really watch Cal's videos, but Leon's sister gives him away and says, well, you know, he has seen you before, and he thinks you're really cute. This starts the whole romance moving forward, but I will say it's a very slow moving romance, which makes it feel so much more genuine than if it was in fact just Insta love, which it's not. I want to talk now a little bit about character development because I think that Phil Stamper writes character development really well, and I want to explain to you why I think he writes character development really well. Phil Stamper takes his time with his characters. We are introduced to Cal Jr. We learn a lot about Cal Jr. before he's even uprooted from his family home to Texas. And then when we get there, we also start learning a lot about Leon before the two even start thinking about building a relationship. The reality show Shooting Stars also helps because these reality show interviewers ask a ton of personal questions. So we get to know a lot about Leon through Shooting Stars as well because Leon is a former gymnast who has had to 
stop his career, like Cal has, to be able to come over to this training camp where his mum is doing the apprenticeship to become a, an astronaut. Or whatever you call it, for NASA. Cal and Leon end up getting to know each other over the course of time, and we learn all these different things about them, things that we love and things that we don't love. And one thing that I will absolutely say about Phil Stamper that I really appreciated occurred in this book is that we go through this emotional scene where Leon is really sad and we get to see Cal Jr.'s internal monologue and he feels really bad for Cal so he wants to kiss him to make Leon feel better. As he tries to lean forward to kiss Leon, Leon says to him, don't. Please don't. If the only reason you're going to kiss me is because you want me to feel better, don't do that, because I don't want that to be the reason why it happens. I really appreciate that Phil Stamper went there, and rather than making his one of his emotional characters get swept away in a romance that just happens purely for the sake of one character feeling sorry for another character, he stops this, and he actually makes a point of it. We don't want this sort of memory. We don't want to look back on our relationship and say that, well, the first time that your dad kissed me was because I was crying and he wanted me to feel better. So let's talk about sticking to the brief. This book very much sticks to the brief. It is an LGBTIQ plus book and 90% of this book is LGBTIQ plus related. There is the side plot of Cal Senior going to Texas and doing this NASA apprenticeship, but it does not take over the story, and I really personally appreciate that as someone who is not the biggest fan. I'm just not. It's just not my thing of NASA and spaceships and all that kind of stuff. It just doesn't interest me at all. I really appreciated that while that is there as a side plot, and it makes sense because that's why we're there at the complex, it doesn't take over the story. It's basically like 10-15% of the story, really. So it's just a side plot to show we are in Texas for a reason, and here's a little bit of information as to why we are there. Another thing I just want to quickly point out as far as character development is concerned that I forgot to mention earlier is how headstrong Cal is in his intentions and aspirations to become a journalist. At one stage, when they're first arriving at the apprenticeship, Cal does a live stream to tell everyone that his dad has been chosen for this apprenticeship, and he's just talking about it a little bit, because he has all these feelings. As I said, he didn't want to be uprooted from the life that he had built from, for himself, so he has feelings towards it, and he vents them on his live stream. Shooting Stars ends up sending Cal a cease and desist order, and eventually, Cal gets to a point where he says, you know what? No, I'm going to keep doing this. And I really appreciate that Cal's family, it's important for you to know that Cal's family never signed anything that said that they can't film their own sort of thing. So he's not breaking any law or any contract law at all by doing it. So I really appreciate that he was able to dig in his heels and say, you know what? My life may have been uprooted, I may have been forced to come here, but that doesn't mean that I have to give up my career, nor am I going to do that. And I really appreciated that about Cal. He is a very headstrong protagonist in that he is willing to go the distance and do what he needs to do, but also what he wants to do in order for him to achieve what it is that he wants to achieve. I really love that. One of the genres I want to talk about when it comes to suiting the brief is the romance. So this contemporary is an LGBTIQ plus male male romance. That's a lot to say. But the male male romance is done incredibly well. Phil Stamper did a really good job, not only for the slow build, but once they, I don't think this is a spoiler because it's a romance, so it is implied, but once they get together, uh, Leon and Cal, they have this really beautiful relationship. And living inside Cal Jr.'s head while he's going through this relationship is really beautiful, especially the moments. Yes, it's beautiful when he's with Leon. But those moments when he's not with Leon, when he's on his own, and he just he just wants to be with Leon. Any time spent apart, it just feels like 
something's missing, and it's just, oh my gosh, it is written so incredibly well. Now I just want to talk a little bit about entertainment level for me when it comes to this book, because I've spoken more objectively about does it suit the brief? It does. Didn't really hit upon contemporary. Um, it definitely reads as a contemporary. Contemporary books are books that take place in everyday kind of life situations, and this one does. So, yeah, it fit the brief on that too. But as far as entertainment is concerned, I loved this book from start to end. There was no lull in this entire book. The, the very first page just had me hooked because it's it very quickly gets to the point of describing the type of person that Cal Jr. is and how he is received in different um, areas and facets of his life, which really has you sympathizing with Cal very early on through to the way that it ends, which is such a beautiful moment. Oh my gosh. And all I can say is that I, growing up as a member of the LGBTIQ plus community, I wish I had this book growing up. It actually came out this year. Now, I didn't know this. I thought this book came out a while ago, but it actually came out in 2020. I wish I had this book growing up because it just would have been such an amazing book to read when I was going through the struggles I was going through with my own sexual identity, I suppose. And Phil Stampard, just the way he metaphorically illustrates everything that's going on in this book. He's done it so very well. I have seen descriptive uh, writing styles done in books done really poorly, and I can harp on and on and on about those books. I really could, but this book, this video is purely focused on, on the gravity of us. Phil Stamper, he does describe a lot of different things, but the way that he does it, he does it really well. He gets directly to the point so that he does enough for you to be able to see what's going on in your mind, but he doesn't go so far as to pull you out of the plot and distract you from what's going on, and so I really did appreciate that as well. I wish I had this book growing up. I, I've read a couple of LGBTIQ plus books this year, and this is by far and away the best one that I've read, and I'm really looking forward to reading not only more LGBTIQ plus books, but I'm also looking forward to reading more from Phil Stamper. Phil Stamper has another book coming out either towards the end of this year or the beginning of next year. I guess it all just depends on COVID-19 and what's going to happen with that. But I have not, never since, since Harry Potter, and I first read Harry Potter when it first came out, but not since Harry Potter have I so anticipated a book that is yet to be released. I feel like with BookTube, I'm sort of coming back from behind, but one of the good things about that is all the books I want to read, they're already available. But with Phil Stamper, his second book is coming. It's not available yet, and I'm just so excited. And if by any chance, Phil, you are watching this, feel free to send me an ARC. If you have any copies, like, because I just, I love your work, and I would love to review your second book as well. But either way, even if I don't get an arc from Phil Stamper, I'm definitely going to purchase the next book, because this book, I just, I can't praise it enough. I, as I said, I love this book from start to end, but this book is an important book for what it does for the LGBTIQ plus community. As I said moments ago, had I read this book when I was younger, I think it would have done a lot for me. When I was growing up as a member of the LGBTIQ plus community, I didn't have a lot of literature to turn to. And the ones that I did turn to, they sort of seemed to model off of I don't know if you've seen this show, but Queer as Folk, and if you're going to watch it, I'm sorry, BBC, but watch the American version, because it, to me, it's so much better. Um, but anyway, that's just... Anyway, a lot of the books when I was growing up, they more modelled around Queer as Folk, which is fine, but it, Queer as Folk is very graphic sexually, and so a lot of those books were graphic sexually. This book is not. This book is a very heartfelt contemporary romance. I just, this is the type of book that I wanted when I was younger, and despite the fact that I'm no longer young, <laughs> I very much appreciate what Phil Stamper has done with this book, and the fact that it is out on the shelves for people who are now my age, when I, the age that I was back then, who can pick up this book 
and read this and just read about a beautiful romance between two gay characters. And it's just, I have so much love. I'm going to try hard not to cry, but I have so much love for Phil Stamper and what he has done with this book. And I just hope that he keeps going. I hope that we end up getting like 10 or 20 books from this guy because he has just done, with this one book alone, such an amazing service to the LGBTIQ plus community. And I would not be sitting here saying this if it wasn't the case. Because if I didn't think that was the case, I just wouldn't say it. Phil, thank you for what you have done with this book. It is amazing. This is a library copy. And so I also want to say thank you to my library because when I received this book, it came as part of a fortnightly delivery service that they used to do. They currently can't because we are in severe lockdown, um, uh, lockdown restrictions right now in Melbourne, Australia. But they offered up a delivery service every fortnight where they would deliver a certain amount of books to you and you just sort of tell them what genres you like, but you don't give them specific books, they choose the books for you. And they chose, my library chose this book for me. So I also need to thank my library for deciding to put this book in my hands so that I could read it. As I said, it is a library copy, but I do plan on getting my own copy of this book because of just... How much I loved it, yes, but more importantly, because of what it does, how important this book is. If you want to read a diverse book that deals with the LGBTIQ plus community in a really beautiful way without having to get to, really, without having to get promiscuous in any way, I would highly recommend this book. It is a YA LGBTIQ plus, not an adult LGBTIQ+, and it is just so beautiful from start to end, as I've already said. I very quickly also want to highlight the relationship between Leon and Cal. We learn a lot about them, as I said, with the character development prior to them even beginning to start getting, to getting together, but once they do get together, thanks to the character development that we have seen, we then see very quickly how the two complement each other. Any weakness that one has, the other is able to fulfill. And it is just really... I, I, just, I could just keep going. I've spoken before about doing videos for an hour. I could talk about this book all day, about how much I love this book, about how much this book absolutely um, fits the brief, and also how much... This is a book that just must be read by anyone who wants to diversify their reading and read a really well written, really well uh, put together and just amazing LGBTIQ plus story. Now, Phil Stamper is part of the LGBTIQ plus community, but there are other authors who are also part of the LGBTIQ plus community that I don't feel hit the nail so well on the head as far as Phil Stamper has done. So that's why I am just raving so much about this book because it is just so incredibly amazing. Just, just go out and get this book because trust me, you won't regret it. This book is absolutely for you unless you are someone who doesn't like romance at all. Maybe not, but otherwise... What this book is doing for the LGBTIQ plus community is incredible. So please do pick up this book. If you do pick it up, thanks to my recommendation, please let me know in the comments below. If you have read this book, let me know what you thought in the comments below. I'm happy to hear your pros and your cons. Let's discuss this. I really do look forward to discussing this book with you guys because of just how much I love it. But even if you don't love it, feel free to still leave your sound off with your own voice below. That's totally fine. But Phil Stamper. If you want to send me an arc of your next book, I will very gratefully accept that book and do a review on it. But even if you don't, I'm going to be in line to buy that book, provided restrictions have been lifted. I will be in line to purchase that book so that I can read it and do another review because, man, you are an amazing author and what you have done 
for me and for this community with this book is profound. So thank you very, very much. I'm going to leave that there and let you guys go with peace, blessings, and so, so, so much love. Today we reviewed Phil Stamper's The Gravity of Us. I highly recommend you pick this book up and let me know what you think of it when you do. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, and Sunday, and I'll see you again soon. Mwah. Thanks for watching and happy reading. Bye guys. Bye.